Is it's can you hear me? I yeah. Think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because sometimes I. Okay, we'll we'll need to start streaming right now. We're already late. Yeah. Yeah. Is that cool. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. Sorry. It no problem. Good. Here we go. All right, hey everybody, and welcome to the 90 Minute Art Challenge. Today's a special one. It's an event. It's a Lightbox Expo Discord event sponsored by Wacom. It's the Spring Extravaganza. And today's awesome guest artist is the one and only Anthony Francisco of Marvel <laughs> Studio fame here. Uh, just wanted to mention what was this kind of challenge all about? Okay, this challenge is all about uh, creating a egg themed painting or illustration mm -hmm. and that's it you know and it has to be digital and you upload it and there was a whole bunch of awesome submissions and thank you everybody that submitted uh and today the one and only anthony francisco is going to um name somebody the winner and what do they win yeah. well they win accolades of course but also they win a brand new Wacom One. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can draw on the screen. Yes, this will be delivered <laughs> to you wherever you are in the world. Thank you to Wacom, sponsored by Wacom. So huge thanks to them. All right, without further ado, let's get on with the painting. So we did our own painting, right? We did our own painting and it's based off of uh the one and only egg movie jurassic park <laughs> yes i know it's awesome it's so hard choosing the winners everyone was so good uh, yeah. great ideas totally i feel like you know as this painting gets started we should check out the entries what do you think oh yeah yeah so the entries <laughs> they were in um because there's so many entries, we want to like spend a good time in there. The entries were all submitted to our LBX Discord uh, server, which you can see uh, on the bottom uh, where it says join. That's the address for our Discord. Okay. <coughs> so I'm just looking for the egg stuff. <laughs> I'm always lost on this. Oh, okay, okay, here we go, here we go. Post submissions, <laughs> right? Or is it end submission? Uh, post submissions. Okay, okay, post submissions. So I will share my screen, and that way we can all kind of see. All right, so where are we? Yes. I think we got to go to the top here, because there's so many awesome submissions. Yeah. You just have to keep scrolling up because there's about, uh, I think Patricia said there's 127 entries. Wow. Which is, it was really hard to yeah. like boil it down. Ha ha. <laughs> yeah. so Bobby, uh, I can give you a link for the first one and then oh. you just have to click it. Okay, perfect. And then oh. you're, you're up top. Okay, perfect. Uh, let me give you where okay okay send you now okay um oh there it is okay cool yeah, and by the way everybody if you're wondering are we all painting on the same painting here yes we are we have, we're painting together on magma studio and that's a free application where you can paint with up to 30 people at the same time you just go to magmastudio.io and get painting. Send your friends the link and then they, they'll be able to paint with you. All right. So with that little intermission, let's go <laughs> on to the first, uh, the first one here. Gorgeous. Just so cute. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Adorable. Yeah, like that one. This one's cool too. That's like a Faber Fabergé egg, right? Yeah, yeah, and creature Fabergé. <laughs> it's very cool. You know what was neat? It was like, it's, to some, it could seem like a kind of dull uh, topic, you know, an egg. But yeah. holy smokes, did people take it to like the nth degrees. 
I mean, look at this one, just beautiful. So many beautiful ones. The other ones were gorgeous too. Oh, so cool. Yeah, I love the ideas. I think that's what that's when you know you you have some designer in you if you take something that just seems like a normal thing and turn it into something epic, you know, like that. Well, that's mm -hmm. you know that's like your job many times. Uh, yeah, taking normal things like a little a little tree, right, and growing it <laughs> into baby group. Yeah. <laughs> This one yeah. looks like a ringer. I don't know about this one. Yeah. <laughs> this is that, that would be mine, but I did not enter. I just wanted to join in on the fun. Gorgeous. I love that one. That one's really oh, cool. Adorable. This one looks Very so like cute. classical, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Classic. I want that as like a t-shirt or print. Mm -hmm. Wow. When I go, when I was going through this stuff, I. It just brought me back to when I was younger in the Philippines. You would be having, you know, boil those eggs and then paint your, uh, you know, mm -hmm. your name on it, you know, because then we do the Easter egg hunt type thing. Oh, so you, uh, so you did real eggs? Yeah, real eggs, boiled eggs. So if you don't find it, it's not, it's not yeah. gonna be smelling good in a few weeks. I know, right? <laughs> I know. I remember we did that one one year, and I was not very interested in trying to find the eggs because they're boiled <laughs> eggs. Because mm. they're boiled eggs. Nowadays, you have to get those plastic eggs and then put some stuff in it. So when you find it, it's like a, what, what we did one time was a piece of paper that tells you the map to the next, you know, the next treasure somewhere in the house, you know? Oh, uh, that's fun. It's like a scavenger hunt. Yeah, yeah, definitely. The kids love that. Um, and you have two kids, yes? Yes, yes. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Now, I wanted to, you know, like, I would love to kind of bring up how awesome of a dad you are. Um, I'm embarrassing <laughs> a little bit because both your son and daughter are like champions, right? Or former champions of stuff, yes? Yes, when they were younger, um, they did jujitsu. So my son, uh, was Pan Am champion uh, 2018, I think, 2019. This was before he did gymnastics. And now both my kids are gym gymnastics now. Um, and he, training for one year, he won um, uh, regional champion. He became regional champion when, when you know, people didn't think he could do it. And he did his first try. After Same with the Pan Am. Jeez. After one year of training. Um, but my kids have always been athletic. Uh, my daughter, same thing in jujitsu. I think at eight, she was kids world champion, like two years in a row. And uh, between them, they've got like f almost 50 tournaments total between them. And, and my son, um, uh, he, he was on a rampage. Uh, like, I think he's won gold 15 times in a row. You know, wow. wow. Yeah, wow. it's great. But again, you know, some of it is is smaller venues, but the big tournament ones are the ones that's amazing to watch because he he had multiple times he had tapped out his competitor in twelve seconds, thirteen seconds. I should show you that, Bobby. One of these days is. <laughs> you know, was, and then uh, and then. Their dad works for Marvel. Only a handful of the best artists in the world work on these Mar Marvel movies, you know. So I just want to bring that up because it's a very interesting thing uh, where it's like, yeah, there's a lot of artists, you know, Frank Frazetta, Norman Rockwell, where even in their, you know, memoirs and stuff, it's like they weren't, they're were amazing artists, but didn't have time for yeah. their kids. It's interesting you say it because that's one of the things I've read in Norman Rockwell's intro, his son. And I said, oh, I can't be like that. I can't not go on a vacation. And he just goes into his cottage and doesn't spend time with the kids at all during the vacation. Um, but they understood, the kids understood that. But I think I'm not like that. But I have to say, though, uh, the reason why uh, it, we're able to do this, I think, for me, it has a lot to do with my wife. Cause she is there for them all the time. They're homeschooled. My kids are homeschooled and she handles most of that stuff. Uh, 
taking them to ballet classes. They did ballet at one point. My son and daughter, they uh, they were very interested in that. And then hip hop classes in Capoeira when they were like four years old, you know, just. Wow. That's well, amazing. You got a super mom it, over there. Yeah, and is it usually like you let them do whatever they're interested in and then um, kind of yeah. from there? I, I think it's more, uh, I just tested out if they're interested in this. Uh, we didn't know if they like it yet, you know, mm -hmm. so try this out, try that. But uh, from just watching them grow up, they, um, I mean, when they were two years old, I was already teaching them jujitsu. So uh, at, at two years old, uh, arm bars and you know uh, the Gracie games that's what they call it where he hangs on my back like a seat belt and I try to shake him off you know if my daughter hangs on your back you could never get him off, her off you know she's just stuck there so that's if we're amazing. at Disneyland walking around they're just on my back while I'm walking around I think <laughs> that's hurting and you said at two they started like you at introduced two, them yeah. wow you know, we have yeah. a whole entire big group of uh, Discord people. Does anybody want to ask Anthony any questions? Oh, yes. Oh, I like this one, this image. Everybody's a little hesitant. Are they at in first. the chat? Or? No, they <laughs> are. They are. I think they're all kind of looking at each other, going, uh, What's okay. the question? I, I kind of want to <laughs> ask a question. Okay, well, if you do it's have a question. Good morning. Yes, perfect. Hello. <laughs> yeah, hi, I'm Jessica. I just, you know, asking a question. How's your morning going? <laughs> Good. Hey, Jessica. Thanks for joining us here. The morning has been great. I woke up really early, but um, I have to say, sorry, I, I, my computer restarted itself and, and, uh, updated some stuff for windows and it messed up a lot of stuff so that's that's my morning oh wow yeah, yeah. and what um, is it... early for anthony <laughs> what's that, oh. three o'clock well, when do you get up when, <laughs> when you consider it early three in the morning or not sleeping like uh bobby <laughs> 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 at all <laughs> um I try, uh, I try actually to wake up at 630. Um, some days, some weeks, I actually am able to do it every day. Um, but that's only because I was I needed to finish so much work. Uh, I was on like, th three, four projects at the same time. So I needed like the whole day, really to get that stuff done. But, um, you know, sometimes uh, you have to do what you have to do to get uh, everything you want in for wow. the meeting. That one's yeah. so cool. They're all, I, there's a whole bunch I want to mention, but um, that one really struck me. Which one, which one? Oh, it's this owl thing, you know? It's like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was pretty cool. I'm seeing a bunch of these for the first time, actually. It's been a busy week. That was one of the choices. Uh, it was hard to choose through these. <laughs> Does anybody else have a question they'd like to ask? Yes. Hey, everyone. Uh, I have one. Oh. Go ahead. You can go first. Um, no so oftentimes people say that uh, the amount of time you get to spend for like yourself or your family depends on like how you prioritize and manage your time. And so I, I guess my question to you, because I struggle with that personally, where I feel like my work or my lack of efficiency kind of bullies me into not being able to do that. What are mm -hmm. some things you do to keep you on task or let you have the time that you want to kind of spend time with the people you love and things that you still enjoy? Um, what I do, I think... Um, this is me. I, I do this sometimes when I feel like, oh, I don't have en enough energy, or my uh, my thought process is is not working at that moment. Uh, I would take a break, right? But instead of just taking a break, um, I would do this. I would go when my kids were really small. 
because they allow, allow allow me to do that. Now they're older, they're 13 and 12, so maybe uh, they don't let me do this anymore. I just go to them and then I just pick them and hug them and I just pretend I'm taking all their energy. I'm taking your energy, give it to me. And I'm just hugging them and kissing them and say, I, I need energy. So they'll hear, hear me do that sometimes. Like, ah, I can't think. So I walk around and I look for them and I need energy and they'll just come to me and give me the energy. Uh, so I, I kind of pretend that way um, and it makes it kind of fun to just relax and not think about the work for a moment. And while we're playing uh, or doing jujitsu, uh, we, I, I would have an idea and then, oh, just a second, I go back to it, you know? Um, sometimes it's, um, during the during COVID, it's a bit different because you have the whole day, so I could take longer breaks in between and just, you know, play a board game with them or something. And they're older now, so, uh, we could play like Magic the Gathering or something or or just um, Risk, you know, different board games. Mm -hmm. um, that's one way I kind of take a break and spend time with my family at the same time. Um, uh, and, and during COVID, we were lucky enough to find a home that had a, a pool. So I try to swim with them every every chance uh, we would get. Uh, but nor... Uh, but you know, I, I know some people don't have that, uh, uh, like like a pool or something in the backyard. But um, there's many ways that I could uh, do to kind of how you say, be more efficient by not overworking myself. Um, and it might sound crazy. I wake up six thirty in the morning to, and then keep on working and seem like I'm overworking myself. But in between those, uh, in between the time from six. This might sound really bad, like there's no balance. Six in the morning to six in the evening. I, I keep on working, but it's it's like it's not work. It's just it's just too much fun to do this stuff. Uh, but in between that time, I would take breaks in, in between. Sometimes even hour breaks, two hour breaks, and because I just I just go off with how I feel. If I feel like at eleven o'clock I gotta still do some stuff, then I will. Um, but uh, but recently I, I had a better balance where I just tell myself to turn off my uh, monitor, my computer at 10 um, or 11, 12 the latest. <laughs> so it's like, uh, as long as I, I don't pass like 11.30, everything should turn off. Um, it, it was a struggle. It, 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 it's always like, that is my struggle. Same thing where um, I need to stop and, and uh, regenerate you know um just yeah take a break. six in the morning till 12 like midnight 18 hours <laughs> yeah but again i'm not working like straight right it's it's right. just whenever the inspiration comes or if it's not there i take a break uh maybe a two-hour lunch or something um uh, i think that's the drawback of working from home mm. right I think that is because there's no line and that was so hard in the beginning it was really hard to get to a better um um uh schedule you know because it it should be eight to ten hour hours and i should stop you know um but sometimes uh you know how if you have worked before and you're working in a place you don't want to work at and then you go home and you do your own designs after but this one is different because you it's like it's my break. It's like I'm on vacation the mm -hmm. whole time. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the addiction that I have to stop. But how can you if that's what you love to do? It's hard. Um, this is a song. What's that song? Hey, I'm on vacation. Something, something. Do you remember that song? Oh, I got I think you I need forgot. to sing I'm... a few more bars. And then oh, man. I, I suck at singing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe I can look for the song and play it real quick. Uh, <laughs> so back when, like, before all of this <laughs> pandemic happened, I I'm assuming you had, like, a better work-life balance because it's, like, when you go into work, you just do work, and then once you come home, it's just, like, you personal time. Or was there, like, a little dabbling of, like, oh, maybe I'll think of a few more things here and there? Um, it's, it was... Oops, sorry. But it was on um, is better, I think, because uh, the work stuff was at work. Um, although I'd bring home stuff if we need to, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but it 
it was better. But at the same time, uh, mm -hmm. uh, working from home is awesome because I see my kids every day. You know, so it's mm -hmm. it's and, and I don't have to like, I just wake up and go straight to the computer. Well, I mean, thirty minutes, uh, do eat breakfast or exercise or something, and then go to the computer. But um, most of the time. I just wake up, go to the computer. I don't, have, don't need to drive to work. Don't need to get ready. Just straight and, and work. Uh, yeah, yeah. Now that I'm saying it all, I, I realize I do need a better work life. <laughs> yeah. In, like, um, I know like some people, it's like, oh, just having a separate room from your bedroom makes a big difference when you yes, separate right. your life. But for me, I feel like I need a completely new computer in a different room so that I can spend my, you know, personal time there without wanting yeah. to touch, you know, art related stuff. <laughs> and maybe that's just like. No, I, I, I get that for sure. I have a friend who, when the pandemic started, he, he had a little sh shack at the back of his house that he built, um, that he had his stuff there. And uh, when I say shack, it's not a shack. It's like a little. He had some contractors come in and build a little house back there, mm -hmm. uh, which is just small enough to hold his computer and two chairs, you know, just so he could be there uh, and, and just work and not be uh, interrupted. Ah, um, oh, that's amazing. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, but he's a writer, so he doesn't need a lot of stuff uh, in his mm -hmm. room. Um, but yeah, it's such a hard because uh, sometimes when 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 you have extra time when i have extra time i'm learning you know i'm just listening to like a like how to do blender or getting better at my zbrush um stuff that i could use later to be more efficient with my work because i love painting everything but sometimes uh, if you get a th 3d model going it's easier to get the turnarounds i don't have to repaint things for turnarounds um because you know with the work I do, the more efficient I could be to clearly uh, deliver like the message or my uh, the discussion we're having or my uh, um, recommendations for certain uh, you know scenes or, or characters or costumes, it's really how clear it is than how nicely painted it is. Well, of course, it should be nicely painted so the clarity of the design is there and the textures of the clothing, um, but. Um, it could always, I could always get faster and more efficient uh, with it. So, uh, wow, there is a end up... lot of entries. Oh my God. I'm still, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. way to go, everybody. <laughs> my goodness. Yeah. Wow. That's interesting. The flamingo in the, I <laughs> found. There was another one that was super funny. It was like a uh, mama alien painting. Uh, on baby alien eggs that was funny I thought that was oh funny. that's funny. Uh, that's yeah. great that's awesome my goodness though that's amazing <laughs> how many entries we got yeah anybody else have a question for or do we want to go slido Masay? are there yeah. any questions in slido um yeah there is one um actually i saw a one in the YouTube chat. Um, the person was asking, uh, does Anthony have a favorite Marvel character? Oh. Yes, actually, I, I do. Um, <laughs> the X-Men. No, oh. you said, okay. <laughs> I mean, this is the whole. Marvel. <laughs> because yeah. you're working on the X-Men right now, right? Oh. No, I can't. I don't want to get you in trouble. <laughs> I wish. Um, <laughs> Right now, I'm working on uh, Ant Man, Black Panther, and um, and something. I forgot. It's all good. Maybe you should just forget. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what was cool was uh, I saw that you posted some Gears of War stuff that you did. Yeah, yeah. When that was, was that? um. How long ago was that? That was um, when I was a workaholic. <laughs> that was when <laughs> it's too much. To, I'll never do that again. It was um, uh, when was that? That was in uh, that's a few years ago. I think 2015, 
2016. Um, it was something I uh, couldn't pass up working on the bosses, you know, because I, 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 which I'm going to post eventually, like maybe next week or this weekend or something. I, I designed the final boss for for Gears of War 4. And and I failed to share that for some reason. It, things are just so busy that now is a good time because it reminded me of um, of uh, Godzilla versus Kong. So I'm like, ah oh, man, if I could just uh, do a kaiju right now, you know, paint one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and I thought, oh, I'll just I'll just share this uh, mm -hmm. Gears of War. Did you guys play? Did you guys play Gears of War? Not yet. <laughs> Not at all. I think somebody's mic is on. Maybe somebody wants to check that. But um, we we just hear a little bit of Helen. I don't know if she wants to say something. But hey, Helen. Oh yeah. Am I seeing you? Oh my God! I'm so sorry. I didn't know I wasn't muted. I'll be. Oh. oh no, no worries. worries. Hey, hey Helen. <laughs> <laughs> Helen Chen. She's amazing. Hey, hello, uh, Anthony. How you guys doing? Good. Hello. Good. Good. No, it's, my, it's me, Ahmed. Once again, I'm the one from Detroit. Um, I have a question for uh, Anthony. Yes. Um, I, um, how did you practice uh, anatomy and figure drawing? Like, because I know that's one of the like one of the important fundamentals for like your line of work. Um, I uh, started doing um because I wanted to get into animation first, so I I started taking first taking a. Uh, quick sketch uh, gesture drawings, like one minute, two minute ones. And that really helped me lay down like uh, a good structure or rhythm before putting on the anatomy. And um, I, I don't know anatomy in such detail. I mean, now I know a little bit more, uh, but having, uh, practicing the basic shapes, you know, and proportions, very important. There's this book that I like that I don't remember uh, how can I forget the name of this book? I think it's Walter Reed or something. Um, anyway, I'll, I'll post it. I'll look for it and I'll post it on my Instagram. Uh, but that book was really helpful to me because it had a simplified anatomy for me and um, showed proportions uh, relative to like the head size and stuff. And knowing how to... Uh, do that well, I think helps uh, a good base for your anatomy because um, mm -hmm. then you could just build the muscle on, on top of that. Uh, and, and you also want to almost have your own um, your own mannequin style, I guess, that you get used to drawing over and over again really quickly in two minutes, different poses, different angles. It is difficult, but uh, but having something like that will, will definitely help uh, your uh your understanding of, of the figure. Um, and, then, yeah. and then from there, you do like a, a, our uh, studies. Um, another really favorite one of mine that I learned when, when I was going to the school called, called Associates in Art, like in 90, 1998, I think is when I went there. Um, and they were all taught by professionals. And one of them, uh, uh, Mark Westermo, he had shown abstraction from uh, Andrew Loomis book, uh, just how rhythms from the neckline could go down to the hips and different stuff like that help me um, kind of follow rhythms of the muscles, even though it's not anatomic, anatomi anatomically, <laughs> how do you say that? Anatomically. Anatomically. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. Anatomically, just... Uh, uh, now I forgot what I was it's say. more uh, the rhythm and like how yeah things. yeah it's not quite anatomically correct um, but um, it looks correct you know when you when you render it out um, uh, so so I, I try not to 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 beat myself so much in the beginning because in the beginning you know you uh, are learning and I, I used to do that like oh this has to be perfect this has to be exact but. I real quickly realized that if it's too exact, it, the pose gets stiff. So you should allow yourself to push the forms a little more and be a little more, you know. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Um, I had one more question. This is, uh, I think, this would relate to all three of you, like you, Bobby, I uh, mean, you, Bobby, and to say, um, you know, with the pandemic going on, do you think now, like, uh, 
more studios are thinking about being more like remote because I think it would be cool, cool, you know, to you know be an artist remotely and be able to you know travel the world so long as you get your work done. Anthony, I I think so. Oh yeah, Anthony, go ahead. Oh, you guys, you guys first. Well, we've been working remote. Yeah, I'm gonna so repeat it again. <laughs> so. <laughs> Like, you know, I started the studio 16 years ago in Toronto and I'm still in Toronto. And I worked for, I think maybe one Canadian studio, like the whole entire time. So yeah, this remote work and stuff, it's more like everybody's catching up to what we've been doing for the last yes, 15 yeah. years, 16 years. I think so. That's what I was about to say that this pandemic had just solidified that artists could actually still do good work even though they're not at the office. Um, yeah. what, one thing that really changed for me was thinking, yeah, you know, when we go back to normal, uh, it doesn't have to be back to normal. You know, if anybody wants to work mm -hmm. from home, I'm like, yeah, totally, why not? You know, it's been working well for the last year or so anyways. So that's definitely changed. Uh, currently, I'm on a film where the art director lives in uh, Montreal, right? And it's a Netflix mm. uh, project. So, you know, it, there's there's so much more opportunity now, I think, for remote work. Right? Mm. There's just a mm -hmm. much bigger openness to it. Yeah. yeah, the reason why I was asking, because, like, I'll tell you what, I want to work in some of like the sort of, you know, Japanese entertainment and stuff, you know, it's really what I have my eye on because I'm into like the, you know, the video games and stuff like that, that they do. But, um, if I would ever get an opportunity to like work for, you know, do something for Mar Marvel, like a Marvel cover or, you know, something with the movies and stuff, I wouldn't mind doing that either, to be honest. Yeah, yeah me neither. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> me neither. I have a slightly piggyback um, question. Sure. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, if things like become more remote and it becomes like much more normal to have all of your art done out out off site, like out of the office, how do you think that affects maybe like associate artists or internships, people who are entry level and like want to know how to like work in a studio? How does, do you think that will impact bringing in new talent into the industry if everyone's working from home? That's a great question. Anthony, yes. what do you think? Great. I would say um, the funny thing is you have access to some of the good artists right now. Like Bobby is always, you know, they're helping people out with their art or Instagram where um, the professional artists you know, like myself, that's on there, I could see other artists work if you tag people or again, it's sometimes it feels like a numbers game where you uh, you have to constantly be putting your stuff out there so people can see it. Um, and in terms of having, you know, it's still good to be working in on site sometimes. But um, when, when you're an artist, I think I think there's what there could be ways around that. Um, but if it's both available, it's not like it's one or the other. You kind of want to try both um, if it's available. But right now, um, I guess your question is if all the artists just work remotely. And that's probably not going to happen because some artists, like uh, uh, depending on your, uh, on your um, rank, I guess, it, it have to be at work to manage stuff what does does marvel first does marvel take any interns um no we don't have that program right now i don't know if it's going to change uh it might it's just sometimes uh not sometimes it's it's just you have to it's such a high fast paced high intense environment that you need to kind of get in there and and have to be good already you know right, right. Uh, yeah yeah that but is that a really mean... good question though you know like yeah. are people still taking interns i i got the i got the email from a couple colleges and i unfortunately to be very open i didn't 
end up doing anything with them you know um it just doesn't yeah. feel like the right situation for me to take on somebody you know i've got all this other stuff going on a pandemic trying to organize all this stuff every day yeah, yeah. so i i wish you the best of luck um but we do have the discord you know and and there's plenty of opportunities to talk with professionals on here i'm i'm on here quite a lot as well miss a's on here quite a lot Yes, I and I'll think... try to be on here more often. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. Please do. You know, this is totally and... where I hang out. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. my dog is barking. Is that is is that kind of? Can you guys hear that? I actually thought that was my neighbor's dog. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, so sorry. Uh, let me check real. I know why he's barking. He's barking because. He thinks there's strangers in the house because you guys. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. It's like, just... who's he talking to? <laughs> okay, no worries. Yeah, while Anthony is um, taking care of uh, the little puppy there. Um, Be on here. What's that? Oh. Right. Oh. Okay. Well, is there maybe another question? I see a bunch of questions coming in through YouTube. If you go to, you see where it says ask uh, on the lower part of the screen, it, it, there's a URL there that says slido.com slash nightymac. And that's where you can uh, write in your questions and you could also upvote your questions. And you know what? While Anthony's away, let me just tell you what's happening this weekend. Here we go. <laughs> All right, commercial break is over, and Anthony is back. Yeah. Television magic. So Perfect sorry timing. about that. Apologize. <laughs> I have a very important question. What kind of dog do you have? <laughs> I have three dogs, and one is a like a like a Chihuahua mix, and the dog that was barking is a is a um, wow I forgot <laughs> a golden uh, not a Labrador Labrador. And then our last dog, which is the oldest dog, is um, is a uh, boxer pitbull mix. Oh, last yeah. important question. What is it like being a father of three? Uh, <laughs> father of five, maybe. <laughs> father of five, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is, uh, it's crazy. It's fun. I mean, uh, everyone in our family, including the animals. I have one cat, too. So we have, at wow. one point, we had two rats also. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to call is you that... Dr. Doolittle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My daughter, she loves animals too, and, and my wife. When uh, back then, when we first uh, were together, we would just save um, dogs from the pound, you know. So we had four dogs at one point. Oh, wow. uh, our, our oldest dog, <laughs> yeah, our oldest dog was twenty years old. He he passed away uh, last year, or yeah, wow, it was last year. 20. Amazing. That's a long life. Oh. Yeah, my whole oh. career, he was there from the beginning. Oh, wow. that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> So, so yeah, that dog. He, he, he died. In, he went to sleep. He died in sleep. But he 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 was fighting. Uh, he even though he he couldn't see anymore, he couldn't walk anymore, you know. But when he barks, you know, he's thirsty. You know, he's, he's like a Jack Russell mix, like mm. our smartest dog. Oh wow! Lived a good life. Yeah. Can I hey, ask Anthony. a little painting question here, real quick? Like um. Oh, yeah. You know, when we were painting, yeah. we were talking a lot, by the way, everybody. Yeah. So I, I feel like Missy and I were distracting Anthony quite a bit. But uh, usually when you paint, are you usually using 3D assets as well? Uh, when I do certain types of characters, I want to use 3D. Um, it's just faster to paint, but um, it really depends on the situation. Uh, I I am trying to be um, 
I, I'm trying to move a little bit more to to having more models so it's faster. And do you share the models with everybody else, or does everybody have to sculpt their own gauntlet and their own whatever? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, I. I don't share my model because you know they're better modelers than me. I don't want to embarrass them with my embarrass myself with my model. Um, but usually we're not on the same project, so you know we don't really have to share it. Uh, we do have. Um, well, I haven't been doing so much models, but when I I do have to do creature stuff, it's it's usually just on my own. We don't normally share our our models. Mm. Great. I think yeah. I um, I talked over somebody that was just about to ask a question. So if you're still there and you'd like to ask a question, please go ahead. Hello? You there? Yes. Hello. Yes. Uh, can you hear me? No. Uh, yes, we can. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, if you can hear me, uh, I have a question. Once the pandemic's over, do you think studios would be more open to internships, both in the country and outside of the country? Hmm. What do you mean by outside the country? Like, like I mean, uh, when everything is back to normal, they're <laughs> going to be looking for talent every, everywhere. No, yes. I'm just thinking, like, are you saying outside of the country, like they stay outside the country and it's over the internet? Like, um, I don't know, like if they see someone, uh, like see someone online, like their art work is really good, oh. but they live like in a different country and all that. And they offer for them to come to America and work at the Well, studio. if they can, if they can, or like work from home and all that. Oh, okay. Mm. I know. <laughs> it's a... Uh... Weird question. It's um, I, I think they would if you're you know if they if you're the right person that they need for a particular project on a particular time, mm. then then they will want you to go there or work from home and uh, remotely. Um, a lot of people do that, but some artists just want to be at the studio so they could meet more artists there because sometimes a good environment just you know it, it gives you more inspiration. You know, you walk around seeing people better than you and you're like, oh, I want to be as good, you know, or you work harder. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, what do you think, Bobby? I think you just keep your stuff out there, right? Always mm -hmm. uh, showing your improvements. I think people, you know, people are eager to get their um, their mentorships going again, their, their co-op, their internships going again. You know, because it, it does play a certain purpose as well. Uh, whatever its purpose, it's probably different for each person, each studio. But, you know, they started doing that for a purpose. So I, I feel like they'll continue. And Masay yeah. and I, we met because... Um, well, actually, no, you weren't an intern. <laughs> Never mind. You know, <laughs> a lot of people that come into the studio before anyways not Masse. she passed mm -hmm. the line but um uh they would come in first as an intern mm -hmm. yeah and I, I feel like for the whole internship it might take a bit of time just because um just for safety reasons so mm -hmm. i think maybe in the next couple years um it might be more online if anything you know i was just thinking about this, uh, just you know, like the, it's the word internship. I just wonder if, if I could, it, I'm just trying to relate it to, let's say, something I want to do. Let's say I want to direct or write or or do my own uh, IP. Uh, and what I started doing was, um, I started uh, finding out writing. Okay, this this is not with art, right? This is like for writing because I'm not a writer, but I want to learn. Um, I started going to like gatherings of writers or going online, meeting people or taking classes. And before the pandemic, uh, I, I was invited to, to a, um, like a, the word, like a fundraiser. And, and, and I think going to different fundraisers and, and, and meeting people there and offering your help 
instead of saying, can I intern for you? Maybe it's a mindset thing. Can I help you? You know, is, is there anything you, you I can help you with? Then they will see it more as a, you know, like a, it's not an internship. It's just you're helping them. And then next thing you know, it becomes a, uh, a can you teach me how to write? You know, and, and can you write the story I have and direct it and I'll help produce it. And then you collaborate next thing you know, like doing this short film with someone. Um, and I never know how to write. I don't know how to produce. I, I put that on the line, but I want to learn. And can we do something? You can just teach me. Is that an actual example or do you have like an example? Yeah, an actual exa that is an example. Is an actual example like of, of what you're doing right now, of how to how you're going about learning to write. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm collaborating with the writer and I told her my story when I was uh, uh a really funny, embarrassing story, but I thought we, I should tell this story. So I, I was looking for different writers that would want to collaborate with me. And uh, this writer wants to direct. And she, I said, you can direct my film if you allow me to you know, produce it. Uh, I don't know how to do it, <laughs> but I'm going to try and fail or succeed or whatever. But um, that is almost like being in a situation with a professional, you know, she's a professional writer. So uh, I, I learned how uh, workshopping uh, a script is and, um, and and what ideas a writer would be thinking when she's writing. And this is how I, I learned a little bit of the process. Uh, of course, it's just the very beginning stages, but once the pandemic is done, hopefully I, we could actually do the short film, um, the script. It's pretty awesome. That's great. That's so exciting. Yeah. As if you don't have so, enough stuff to do, you're going to do <laughs> this on the side. Uh, well, this one was a little bit different because uh, I just had to look at, you know, I just told the story, my story, and then she came up with a script and I just looked at, you know, read it and gave notes. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, you know, it's an hour, two hours from the week. Um, oh, yeah. Don't worry. I, I, I totally understand that kind of stuff. Like half the time. Well, you, you have so much to yeah. yeah. Why did I start this thing? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I, yeah. I so hopefully that's a good example of. I, yeah. Sometimes it just happens naturally. Um, sorry, Patricia. Go ahead. Yeah, no worries. Uh, actually, I, I wanted to ask uh, a question before. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. Hey, Anthony. Um, Hi. My question Patricia. is, uh, uh, what is uh, up, until until now like your most memorable project you've worked on? Uh, because I know you did so many things for Marvel. Like, is there any particular moment that stood out, or any particular project? Um, wow, that's a hard and good. Like good question, because uh, each project has the fun stuff, you know, that that goes along with it. Uh, when I was working on Project Offset, I think it was one of my favorite times. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with Project Offset, it's when I was in a game company and our company got bought by Intel. I was there with Kang Lee and uh, the people who created the Project Offset engine, and the reason why that was such a fun time because. Uh, we were a smaller team and everyone had different hats and I actually uh, was the lead story for that for that team. So I came up with um, like episodic story for each character and like an overall kind of uh, story arc for the game. Uh, and I even got to do, you know, uh, level design and uh, cinema. Uh, I was like directing the cinematography for the beginning of the show. It was just a lot of stuff that felt so so much fun to do. Just a, a lot of learning at also, and um, um, yeah, and that game never came out. That was like three years. Oh no! <laughs> I'm looking through it now. It looks amazing. Um, yeah, I will send it into LBX live chat for the people to watch. Yeah, it was so promising. Uh, there's some internal stuff that happened that I probably can't talk about, but uh, that would have been, uh, I, I did so much storyboards. I even did like a, an hour and a half storyboard thing for like this whole movie that could have been 
uh, people are interested of making a movie of our game. Uh, and the episodic content would be like, you know, a series that that we were kind of trying to pitch and stuff. And uh, different companies tried to pick us up, like uh, Digital Domain was trying to get us. Uh, um, I don't know if EA or, or Liquid, I, I forgot the other ones, but it was Digital Domain and Intel that became the last people and Intel won the the bid. <laughs> and then we went there and um, yeah, it's a longer story. I don't want to take over the the time here with that story, but it, it was it was a fun time because it was new things I, I got to do and I got to really like um, being head of story there was was really fun, uh, even though I had no experience, you know, they trusted me with that. Well, we do love stories here. So how about, you know, it's something that I was thinking about. It was like uh, the other day I was just thinking the things that like if I was to ask you to take us back into a moment of your art career for all of us to witness, we can't change a thing, but just to see it, oh, uh, that moment, right? If you could have that in your head okay. versus what moment would you take your parents to see in your career? Wow. Because a lot of times it's different. But with my parents. Uh, what would what be mo those two moments? I would love to hear that. It's funny. Wow, that's there's a lot of moments, but it's almost like different parents. Like my mom would be, one part would be, uh, uh, <laughs> sorry, not, not, I mean, they believe that could be something, but you know, sometimes you're like, "How?" Uh, let me just give you a, a, an idea of how. How are you going to teach at art center if you didn't even graduate college? How's that going to happen? So it's almost like that kind. Of, well, I'm going to teach there because I'm going to be a good artist and I'm going to be well known or good enough that they'll ask me to teach there. So that was kind of like the. And now, okay, here if I take her from there and bring her to the moment and go. See that? I'm teaching at Art Center uh -huh. one semester, nice. you know, and, and so something like that. So that would be for her uh, to to know that that I wasn't delusional, <laughs> but it, it was born off a conversation that okay. the conversation was why, why, why go to school when I could just do art in the portfolios, the what's the most important thing and not my grades. That was the discussion. So part two. You know, say you're taking this uh, young and up and coming group of artists into part, into time of your career. <laughs> what part, what time, you know, where would you take us? Wow. I love these setups, Bobby. I, 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 love, I love the way you explain this. Uh, vi like visually, I'm like trying to, wow, this is so much. Um, what part? This seems harder for some reason yeah. to think of. Uh, what I found was generally we want to take, like for me anyways, and the people I've talked yeah. with, it's like, where would you want to take your parents or your kids? I want to show them something where they can be really proud of me, right? And then where would yeah. you want to take us, the, the next generation of artists or the artists now, I want to take you to a hard part of my life, right? Yeah, where that was, was where going. my mind was going. Yeah, mm -hmm. like not not at Marvel, um, although there are some things there that is good learning life lessons. Uh, but the part that my mind was going to was when I I was just trying to hustle and try to get print all my stuff out and and send it to all these effect shops. Um, don't listen to the guy that tells me, hey, you need painted stuff in your work. You don't have, don't send it in yet. Go, but I have no time. I have to like, I felt like I was running. So if I, I didn't have, I felt like I was gonna die in, in five years and I gotta get this going now, you know, whether I'm ready or not, it doesn't matter. Cause uh, my, my parents also separated at this time and it's like I, if anything happens, I just gotta be ready. Um, so, I think that was the sense of urgency that pushed me to just give my stuff 
in even though i don't have any paint and stuff it's all in pencil you know um and uh and and it worked <laughs> that's what's crazy uh during that time i don't know some people say maybe now it won't work if it's pencil work but uh it, it's it was um it's pencil work but the ideas were there and all they needed at that time was ideas you know mm -hmm. it's like I guess the right time at the right place, but still you got to put yourself at that time, anytime it could be the right time, you know, mm -hmm. for your work. Um, whether you feel you're ready or not, just send it in. That's mm -hmm. what happened to me. And I am not the best artist back then. There are many artists better than me, uh, but they needed one that, that I fit. And plus I wasn't expensive. That's another one. <laughs> So all the elements just fit in, uh, then then I, I got in. Uh, like on AI, I worked on AI, um, the Steven Spielberg film, and I didn't have any Photoshop painted images yet, but I just knew that they were working on AI and all my stuff was creatures and I put two robots in there, just two robots and that mm -hmm. got me in, you know? Um, and, and, and while I was working there, I didn't have to paint anything. All Crash McQuarrie was there. He, all he said to me was, "We just need ideas, just and I'll paint and and he'll finish the rendering. You know, just give us ideas." And that's when I realized oh, ideas are important. You know, yeah. maybe yeah. I can get through this career with just ideas. <laughs> and I love how you just like you didn't really listen to what those other people were saying, and you just put yourself out there. And just doing that, you never know like what kind of opportunities you get so you never it's know like, it's fear is a dangerous thing and kind of overcoming that can create a lot of you know great stuff for you that is yeah. so well put Missy. oh my gosh you know, <laughs> like somebody was telling me the other day um just like some internet advice or whatever it's like uh yeah you know, I, if you meet more people, you just kind of let anybody kind of in, then people are going to take advantage of you. You know, and that was the vibe that this person was giving me. I was like, man, I, I feel so bad for that person because they're going to be shut off to the world. And, you know, yeah, some people might take advantage or whatever, but so much more will come in that's good, you know, mm -hmm. as long as you're yes. putting that energy out there as well. Yeah. It's like the higher percentage of people you meet, the the higher your percentage of meeting the right person, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You just get connected yeah. even more. It it's funny this fear thing really uh, relates to almost everything you do even with relationships, right? The fear of getting hurt again, the fear and you kind of always take that leap and um that leap of faith, I guess, or or belief in yourself really, you know, having that uh in uh, understanding that there's failure and and just being able to embrace that, I think that's where. But at that time, I didn't have failure in my mind. I just, I just was playing the numbers. Just send it to all these places. If they say no, just send it again. You know. But did you yeah. ever have failure in your mind where you're like, oh, am I going in the right direction here? Like I, I, I keep hearing I need to finish college by my mom, and she's on my case, and. <laughs> You know, nothing's happening. And was there any kind of moment where you're like, oh, man, am I doing the right thing here? Well, I, I think in terms of what I want to do, no. I, I just said whether I make money or not, I'm going to do art. Cool. That's what I love to do. And I'm bad with math. So I have no choice. <laughs> so something like that. Uh, I think it's all mindset, right? There's something I say to myself that I can't do this. So this is all I have. This is plan A. No plan B, you know. Um, uh, yeah, I, I think that's how I set my mind to that. But in terms of failure, I have failed. I feel like I've failed um, many times. And I think because I started working early and I didn't, you know, I didn't finish school and stuff. So a college, an art college, uh, I learned everything mostly from work. And um uh, uh, the first place I worked at as, was in ADI, and Alec Gillis gave me this really great 
great way of thinking of uh, your designs when it gets rejected. You know, it's it's not that you failed. You actually helped the production figure out what they didn't want to do. <laughs> and when I see that, <laughs> yeah. And when I said it one time to somebody, I was giving them the same advice, and they were laughing because then then it's like, why, why are you laughing? It actually does make sense if you if you switch your mind that way instead of saying, "I'm a failure because I gave them something they didn't need," but switching into, "I succeeded because I gave them something they knew they didn't want to get do." Yeah. Positive. It's yeah. like, why would they and let me go? Way. I gave them so many rejected images. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Sorry, Mr. Another Mr. way yes. of thinking is like maybe that whatever it is that was presented wasn't fit for that project as well. That's yeah. like not the right actor, for example. Yeah, or not like the direction. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so, so you do more options. And that's when you learn, that's when I learned that okay, this option should really clearly be this direction. This next option should not look like this direction. Mm -hmm. Just three to four very clear separate directions. And that's um, the best the best uh, uh, strategy, really. You know, that uh, I think it was yesterday, this new Ghostbusters trailer came out with Paul Rudd and he's going through the store and um, sees a bunch of little marshmallow men. Uh, <laughs> I worked on that scene. Oh, awesome. Yeah. yeah. But it's, they I gotta up, watch it. Well, you don't need to watch it for my sake. <laughs> they ended up going with the original design of the Stay Puff Marshmallow. So uh, I helped because I showed them what they didn't want. You know, so like, yeah. you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Like this hairstyle or this hairstyle? Oh, you do. 10 versions and you know they choose one but if you're lucky and after um luck is not really there's some luck but if you are you know you've been in this industry for a while you kind of know that uh this director likes this kind of stuff and this director really like that you know and and you intentionally now do something you know they won't want just so they could compare it with the one that you think they'll want right beside each other right you know, um like yeah. a real estate agent, you show them two houses that are not what they want, and then the third house is, and they're like, "Yep, I'm gonna take that." That's it. I'm badass. I know how. It, I know what you're thinking. You know, like, yeah. there is something about that. It does work. You know, it's sometimes yeah. they need to see what what they were thinking of, so that they know that they don't want it, and then they can hone in on what you know the idea that they should be taking. Yes definitely as a concept artist that is in a way your job for quality control or um getting the discussion to a, a better place awesome um how are we doing on time here uh yeah you want to take another question from discord anybody anybody on discord want to join in with anything hey i have a question Hi. sure can you speak up a little bit Okay, uh, can you hear me now? Yes, better, yes. Okay, um, I had like a quick question regarding like schoolism. What is like the best course that we can take on schoolism in your opinion? Ooh, well, that one is a tough one because everybody is, you know, everybody has their own uh, things that are important to them, things that they want to concentrate on. Uh, what was what was your more most impactful course Masse? because you've taken a bunch mm, definitely dyson roberts class that Ooh. and oh sorry it's tied with craig mullins class as well oh, okay. so it's really hard to say wow yeah but you those, those kind of like quick. <laughs> i think i think um it was the moment when i understood like how color and light are supposed to work um so that was kind of like a nice starting point and then after that i'm like slowly getting into nathan's class and like um because they teach similar things it's like kind of it's nice to look at it from a different perspective so not stopping at one class is probably uh a good idea if um whoever asked the question it's like 
although it is nice to start with like the quote quote unquote like best one it's like that's not the only like golden ticket that will get you you know mm -hmm. there so. one that i'm really looking forward to taking i it's been on my list forever is this one deconstructed drawing people with victor kalvachev oh that's cool mm -hmm. yeah i love how he, he thinks about people and is able to stylize and do all sorts of things with them um yeah yeah this if is i had time one. i'd watch all of it <laughs> <laughs> well, and also, if anybody is interested, you know, one of the easiest and best things that you could do is just sign up for a subscription. Because when you sign up for a subscription, you get access to all the courses, and that's over 50 courses now. You know, so you could just wow. pick one and then go to subscribe now. You could do per month or you can do per year. Right. And and uh, after that, you subscribe to any of these. If I subscribe to this right now, that means I have access to all the courses. I could switch in and out uh, as much as I like. Yeah, years ago, I remember taking a class here because um, I love Jason Siler's work. Oh, right know. on. Yeah. Yeah. So that one and the. Um, and dice that's his stuff because i wanted uh, my wife to also paint with me <laughs> so i had her watch that um a little bit and uh but she wasn't into art yet that time <laughs> but now she um, is right yeah yeah now she is i we uh i i told you that story with you bobby how how it was just six months of of drawing and i just had the right strategy for her this time and you know, oh, th that's another thing I forgot earlier. Someone was asking about about training, like getting better uh, with anatomy and stuff. Uh, but what I did with her was was this strategy where uh, we did tracings also of certain uh, books that I like, and uh, she would trace it first. Um, it's it's uh, what do you call that art? Um, film noir uh, shows like black and white. So mm -hmm. just so it's clear of value, she could learn and not think of it as 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 anything but shape. Uh, and I think that really helped her like do her decision making on which should be black, which should be white, you know, which should be gray. And, and that really helped her out. And and now she's like doing birds, uh, which is what one of her favorite things to do. Uh, that's when I realized that she liked doing that instead of giving her all these other exercises that she wasn't interested in when she started doing birds. She did it uh, every day, and now she's so much better at it. You know, oh I got to dig in here because first it, we were talking about your kids, your your daughter and son being the most dangerous kids in the world, <laughs> you know, the most powerful kids in the world, world champions. And now, you know, uh, Pan Am Olympics, you know, world champions, right? Was that or not? <laughs> Pan Am Games. Sorry. Well, not, Pan not Am Olympic. Games. He yes. He wants to be an Olympian. He he probably will I'm be. I'm sure eventually. he does. I'm <laughs> sure he's gonna kick some ass there too, and you know, and then you're doing high level things. Now your wife is getting into drawing and doesn't take very long before she starts getting good. How do you learn? You know, I know that might be such a broad question, but that's what it seems like you're getting. You've you're really good at or your whole family is really good at you know what what is it that is a very because we we love learning i think we love to learn the stuff that we enjoy i think that's what it is because uh when you said oh my wife is learning quickly but the six months i was saying it, that's like the total right it's not she would stop for eight months and from the beginning i could see she she has like a talent but something was in the way and i didn't know what it was in the beginning because she'd do it for one month and then stop for six months and do it again and then stop for eight months you know there's something that i didn't understand i was trying to figure out what it was because i didn't know exactly how to give a strategy for her especially i'm her husband it's, it's almost like like, I don't believe you saying I'm good. You know, it's like, 
you're know, you just gonna say I'm good because you're my husband, you know that kind of stuff. And what can I say that it was it was hard until I realized when I was looking at all her work that the stuff she was good at whenever she draw it was birds, mm. you know. And I said, what if what if you just what if I just let her do what she wants to do, and or, or she doesn't know what it is yet. But what if we just did birds and kind of didn't tell her that that um, how do you say this like like subtly have her do that more often, you know, maybe mm -hmm. that. Um, and and we were going through a tough time too, because um, you know her dad passed away uh, three years ago, uh, and and. I know that is also a reason why it, it was kind of emotional. And I really believe that once she could do the drawing and, and do art, that could help with the anxieties and depression. Um, and I think it, it did because then there was a win she would get, you know? And, and I would feel a win when she would, it would look good. But again, she doesn't believe me, right? Until other people that were artists, you know, that I would say, hey, look at her work say something to her you know or and and in the end it just felt like that fear and emotion was stopping her from from doing the work because you have to do the work to get better you can't not do anything you and the more you do it the better you get um especially with the proper uh uh exercises to do you could get good fast and i think once the mind her mind was was uh, set, I guess, in a way, um, talking through what she liked, uh, why she enjoyed this bird stuff, uh, kind of gave her that extra push to try it. And then she could now see her progression and slowly, uh, when she sees she could do it, because she already could do it with a bird once it, it clicked. I wish I could show you the images where, where I told her this uh, rendering uh, technique instead of like, uh, how do you say this? Instead of doing it like scribbly like this, just do it flat, like mass in the shape with the side of the pencil, mm -hmm. you know, instead mm -hmm. of uh, doing it kind of scribble scratchy kind of deal. And it looked kind of realistic. And I think she liked that. And then kept on doing it the same way, the same way. And next thing you know, uh, confidence build, confidence builds. And then the work ethic started becoming much better. And now I don't even have to say anything. She just does it, you know, it's, it's pretty awesome. I, Amazing. I remember talking with you one time and you were saying that, um, you know, you had like mats in your living room for jujitsu, for jujitsu, you know, with the kids yeah. and, you know, with what you were just saying just now with your wife and just kind of just, you know, casually kind of feeding her more and more opportunities to draw. Right. There's yeah. a correlation there. Don't you think, Masei? It's like <laughs> you make it fun to learn so that it doesn't even yes. feel like you're learning. It's just a product of having fun. Mm -hmm. You said just right, Bobby. That's exactly, exactly right. I wish I said it as good as that. <laughs> I went through this whole story, but that's, that is if you make it fun. Um, and I think I learned that from jujitsu because kids don't just want to work out. You know, we, they learn jujitsu because they love to wrestle me anyway. So while they're wrestling and climbing me like a tree, I tell them to hold me properly. Like, you know, the underhand should hold this way when you're on the back because this way is not good because they could grab this. Well, if, if if it's this way, if they grab this hand, you could choke with this other hand. You know, it's like oh, those wow. little things to, <laughs> to properly do stuff. These kids, um, they're awesome. <laughs> And they're having too much fun to realize they're learning jujitsu already. Yeah. If I can ask a question on that note. Yes, please. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. When it's important to like find mm. the fun in learning and having fun while doing art is the best way and most enjoyable way. Yes. What about like the balance of uh the competitiveness or like the seriousness of sort of like I need to get a job or like I need to find commissions I, I need to make money because it is also a career I'm curious about like maybe in your earlier years how would you have fun with art when you're trying to get that job 
That is a really good question. Um, you want to answer that, Bobby, first, or I... <laughs> I'm, uh, you know, sure. But I, I actually am like thinking. Are you... Did you even realize that it was like stressful or something, Anthony? Like you probably were just like, oh, look at this cool thing I just drew. Oh, you guys need paintings? Oh, I only got drawings. Okay, you know what? I'm going to do it anyways. And you just went in kind of like with that attitude. And, you know, it reminds me of uh, Jorge Gutierrez when he was saying that um, his, his uh, autism, <clears throat> his autism, allowed him to go from rejection to rejection without losing any momentum without losing any of the enthusiasm right and like his quote unquote disability gave him a superpower and i thought that was such a cool story yeah yeah i think for me i don't i don't i don't bother wasting any energy um being concerned about things that are out of my control, right? And that gives yeah, you ultimate control of your life. That, man, I was just thinking about what you said. Uh, I wonder if it's easier for certain people. And I, I think about this often, actually, what you just said, because I could, when I would say that, let's say to a family member or to a, a friend that I'm trying to help and I say it, but it's almost like I need to give them actionable uh, um, a strategy so they could find that way. Because some of them don't, how do you say this, don't, could hear it, but don't know how to do it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I don't think I felt that uh, stress of, I need to work to make money in art. Uh, not like there's no pressure, but there is some pressure. But I, if I want money, I could just get a regular job, you know, and and I'll make money. I, if I want to be rich, I just be a real estate agent. I don't know. That makes so much money. I don't think I'll be happy, you know. Um, but my goal is to be happy, uh, and whether I made a lot of money or not, as long as I'm happy and it and I didn't know the you know the art industry, there are opportunities to make you know a good living. Um which your parents didn't know that you could because my parents didn't know that you could make a lot of money uh doing art. All they know is you're gonna be a starving artist because a fine artist usually, you know, they struggle really uh, long until they get you know but I was going into commercial art uh, which I think more there's more opportunity probably to uh, make money and then go into fine art after I guess you're established uh, um, that doesn't mean don't go to fine art if you really want to do that but I guess my point is uh, how do we help you uh, not have to think about that fear of not or that pressure of oh, I need this job now and then it affects your work and your work suffers because you're thinking about that job is the thinking of your work and how good it could be you know yeah. so it's almost like how do you switch that part off in your mind and go you know if i have fun with my work my work will look good and then i could get the job let me ask you a question where i think i know the answer do you do better <laughs> when you're having fun do you do better art when you're having fun or when you are stressed? <laughs> That's so interesting. Um, I, have, I have fun, but like, if like it's your livelihood, I guess, then it's more difficult to shrug off the stress. No, totally. But I, you know what I think of? It's like, I think of like, uh, when UFC fighters get interviewed after and they're like, yeah, I was just having fun. You know, it's like you were having fun getting kicked in the face, <laughs> punched in the face, choked out, and you're choking the other person out. Yeah, it was fun, you know? It was like you want to tap into that a bit, you know? Like, yeah, it's our livelihood. We all do art for a living. But, yeah, get that little slice that you love about what you do. 
and expand that. Really concentrate on that. Don't look at all that mm-hmm. other stuff that it, you know, you, it, even if you concentrate on it, uh, it won't do you any good, right? It won't get mm-hmm. that person to go, yeah, she's concentrating on this a lot. I'm going to hire her. You know what I mean? Like, she's so stressed out about this. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. I would like to ask uh, her, uh, could you be, I just want to learn more. Do you, could you be more specific with what you mean? Uh, like a, like a situation that you feel you, that happened to you? Yeah. So this question sort of stems from me and my partner. We're both artists and I have the very fortunate ability of being supported by my family so that I can focus on my art and focus on the things that make me happy. But my partner is in a position where, you know, he's working a day job that makes him really, really, really unhappy Mm. and then comes home and he sees art as like, this is the thing that's going to get me the job that will enable me Mm. to be happy. Like if I don't do well, if I don't try hard enough, I'm going to be stuck at this job that makes me miserable. So then Mm. this potential for having a happy life is also like this linchpin of stress that there's so much weighing down on it that I don't, Mm. I want to help him, but I also can't. So it's a really weird like dynamic of there's a lot of pressure, but there is that origin of, you know, we both choose this career because it is what makes us happy. We're artists at heart and Mm. we really do love doing this. Yeah. I I know some people that really thrive off of being pressured right like oh it's due yeah. tomorrow huh i'll do it tomorrow <laughs> and then tomorrow comes and like oh my god and then they <laughs> like they go super seon and yeah a million things are done that day sometimes some of the best designs come from from being a little faster with stuff um mm-hmm. what it what it sounds like your partner um what it sounds like to me is just managing the time and that's so there's work and he could um i'm sure he manages i'm sure he has time to draw and and stuff and and, and get better his work but that small amount of time if he could somehow de-stress and put him his mindset in a, in a good situation let's say like you know i i love drawing monsters and and that's what i watch a horror film sketch out while i'm watching a horror film i love getting scared um and that was the only uh, introduction I have into the industry is doing monster designs. And I didn't even know if I could get in with that. Uh, but after I met Jordu and, and realized there's, there's, a, you know, there's an avenue there, uh, and, and that's what I wanted to do. And that's what I thought would always make me happy. But when I was working on it uh, on, on, in a project, and I realized eventually, what if there's no more horror films or you know, there's not a lot, then I need to learn characters, need to get better environments. And I slowly was practicing that while I was, you know, doing my my creature design job. So eventually when something happens, I could be, you know, a little bit more, um, have a little bit more variety in my work. Um, and, and I saved a lot of uh, money, you know, so when that does happen and I don't have work, I could just keep on doing uh, practicing and and just the process of learning is, is enjoyable for me. Um, so I, I think what I'm trying to say is uh, just like what Bobby's saying, where try to separate your mind. Uh, it's it's hard though to just say that. I think that's why I'm having a hard time trying to yeah. find a proper way of just say, oh, just just cut your mind up from that and just do this. There must be a way for him to be able to just place himself in an enjoyable situation where he doesn't have to think about the work, you know, and, and just know this is part of the journey, you know. Um, I can tell you though a story that happened that I did. I was working at Earthlink. Do you guys remember what Earthlink is? Yeah. No, you don't. <laughs> Earthlink. It's like an internet uh, company, like AT and T. They don't exist anymore. <laughs> um, I was working there in the mailroom, and what I did was, uh, you know, I thought I could do art and that at the same time. Uh, but it was hard because I have to drive home and I'm tired. And so what I did was I saved enough money and I just quit. <laughs> I just quit mm-hmm. my job, 
said, okay, it's for six months for to a year. I'm just gonna. Uh, I don't recommend this for everyone, of course, but I'm just telling the story of what, what I ended up doing. So there's a sense of urgency, so that I could just all the reasons I have for not being able to do good work now job is not there that's affecting me now i have no reason no excuses mm -hmm. you know N now i have to 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 organize my time properly uh which is draw every day till four in the morning <laughs> that's like every day every day every day and i realize oh that's not good i need to take breaks um and and anyway that's that's what happened and met the right people met as many people as i can uh, hoping that there's somebody there that uh, has the same mindset as me, the same positivity, the same kind of personality, so I don't have to be, because uh, this word called networking, that you have to, oh, be fake or something. No, you're, you're meeting people that are like you, that could help you, and you could help them, you know. There's something that um, I was thinking about as you are talking, I was just like thinking about the whole thing of, uh, you know, do you do better when you're having fun or when you're stressed and i th think the answer is like a little of both right like yes, both yeah. of those are are core ingredients for like a really good piece of art i think <laughs> for many times like not every piece of art but it's kind of like when you're cooking if you have too much of one ingredient it's way too salty or whatever right and yeah. same thing with stress it's a long-winded kind of way of answering this going back to what you were saying uh the person that was talking about her um her partner there he has too, it's too salty <laughs> you know he has too much stress and he just needs to know that it's fine to stress uh mm -hmm. but uh, turn it down right and like you need this other ingredient which is like tap into the fun again because that's what's going to bring out the good ideas the good execution and all this other stuff yes definitely but easier said than done for sure <laughs> thank you guys though for sharing your stories and advice i appreciate it you're very welcome what, what was the most stressed you've ever been uh work related masse <laughs> um when i worked on that feature film <laughs> um last summer and it was <laughs> oh by yourself that one yeah, by myself. So that was um, fun, but very challenging. Um, definitely a learning experience, but I feel like uh, I came out shining after that <laughs> from all that like pressure. Yeah, you grew a lot from that one project. I yeah. remember there was a transfer. Yeah, this says a lot about like pressure and accountability. <laughs> My biggest pressure moment was when we started the studio and we have no yeah. income coming in and we're just painting and painting and painting and it's not for anybody because nobody wants to hire us <laughs> you know <laughs> and then you just see that money just keep going down in the bank account and then we had to have something happen when we went to comic-con mm -hmm. right it, the whole entire plan was leading up to comic-con and getting a job at comic-con but is getting yeah. a job is totally out of our control mm -hmm. and that's you know, one of the many reasons that I, I thank, you know, God or whoever is, you know, in charge of all this stuff for bringing Kay into my life because Kay mm. was nothing but just like really living the moment and making sure that I was living the moment too. And then we got a job yeah. and got a bunch of jobs, you know, it's, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. 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 So maybe yeah, you're totally. that person for your partner, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, I believe that our painting is done. Here, yes. So do you want to move on to <laughs> the winners? Entry? Yes. Yeah. So we'll start um, off with um, honorable mentions. Do you want to do that? Yeah. Let's go mm. with our honorable mentions. All right. Honorable mention number one. Do you remember this one, Anthony? What if you could manufacture an egg that is genetically programmed to grow a house? A future where houses aren't built but grown, done in 3D. Beautiful. Fresh on. Yeah. Yay. Honorable. That was fun. Thank you. Yeah. 
Uh, what's the next one here? Prashan is in the chat, by the way. Prashan! Hey, great job, Prashan. You guys, <laughs> thank you. That was yeah. great. That was great, great job. Concept. I'm flattered. Thank you. I love the ideas. This one's from Ty. Yeah, sure. Do you want to yeah. mention anything about this one, Anthony? I, I like this one because uh, I think part of it is uh, I love creatures, so I'm a creature guy, and um, I just like the the way it's rendered and and um, just the alien egg idea. You know, uh, it's really cool. So honorable mention goes to Ty. Way to go, Ty! Ty, if you want to say something, you can do. Yes, if you guys. Hey, can y'all hear me? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We're having technical difficulties. I'm so sorry. Um, thank you so much. Uh, that's, I, I wasn't expecting to be up here, to be honest. So that's, that's really flattering. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Job. Great job. And yeah, thank you for the kind words. Is Grace here? Loosely based on a story of a dramatic, Germanic uh, Easter Easter goddess of spring and dawn. Wow, epic! Yeah, it is epic. I love this shot. It just has a lot of feeling into it, and um, mm. and the theme of it. I, I love it. It's cool. Beautiful colors. Nice design. Wonderful job, Grace. All right, so that was number three. Number f this is the fourth um, honorable mention. Fourth honorable mention goes to Lewis. Thank you. Very cool. Yeah, I thought this pretty epic feeling. So magical. I love how all your choices are so varied, Anthony. <laughs> all right, drum roll. Yeah. So the winner of, I'm going to put it up on the screen again. A brand new Wacom One, where Yay. you can paint right on the screen. This is thanks to Wacom sponsoring our awesome challenge here. And the winner da, 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 of the challenge goes to... Tony 8. <laughs> Yeah, is yeah I thought here? this was really cool. I don't know if Tony, if you're here, let us know. Are yeah. you here, Tony? Great job on this. I, I really enjoyed this. It, it it I like the way you rendered it. I like the theme of it. Um, he's hatching out of the egg, and it's so cute. And uh, the finish quality, too, is just, you know, it's like a pro. You're a pro. Mm -hmm. Everything's there, whole package. Amazing. So, Tony, we're going to be reaching out to you. I think Patricia, maybe, are you going to be reaching out or? Hey, can you hear me, guys? Oh, yeah. Is this Tony? I can hear you now, yeah. Awesome. Hey, thank you. <laughs> That's amazing. Hey, right on, so Tony. Cool. Great job. Great job. And once again, you are winning a Wacom One that will be shipped to your place. Uh, oh, that's so cool. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, Patricia um, will reach out to you and get your information. Awesome. OK, yeah. yeah. Sounds Definitely. great. Thanks. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, that, Tony. All right, so that's it for us, everybody. Uh, I want to thank, of course, everybody in Discord, everybody in YouTube, my awesome assistant, Jamie Marshall. Thank you, Jamie. For helping out and all the mods for helping with this you know event and the stream and everything that you do to keep the community so awesome in discord and my co-host Masei Seki thank you Masei for always being great and uh, being a great co-host yeah. and the biggest thank you goes to our honorable guest the one and only Anthony Francisco. Da, 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 da. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me too. You guys are awesome. It's always enjoy uh, hanging out. Thank with you, you Bobby. Thank you, Masay, and thank you, Anthony, for giving us the opportunity to chit chat with you about art and so on and so forth. Oh, thank you. Guys. Thank you guys for having me. Don't forget to follow Anthony on uh, 
Instagram, and there you could click on his YouTube link and follow him on YouTube as well, or you could just look him up on YouTube. Anthony Francisco, concept designer. All right, everybody, take care and have a great rest of your day. All right, bye.